Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015.5 Volvo S60. Now I'm pretty excited about this because not only is it supercharged, but it's also turbocharged. This is a four-door sedan with seating for five. And this particular trim is the T6 Drive E. The S60 features proximity sensors around the front and back for assisted parking, and it also features adaptive cruise control. The trunk can be open when the smart key is near or simply using the button on the key fob. Trunk space is somewhat limited, but it does feature a center armrest with pass-through, which could be useful for carrying skis, and also the seats do fold down with a 60-40 split. Beneath the floor cover there is no spare tire, simply a tire repair kit and tools. This fully loaded Volvo S60 features the Platinum package as well and comes at an MSRP of $46,525. So let's take a look under the hood. Now as usual there is an engine cover. This one's actually a bit different though as it's not a hard plastic. It's actually basically one material the whole way through and it's a soft touch. Now there are four screws that you need to remove in order to take this off. And once those screws are loosened, you can simply remove that cover. So checking out the overall layout, we've got our engine coolant over here, our engine oil fill right here, simple quarter turn. Now with the engine oil, there isn't a dipstick, it's actually electronically monitored, so that's one thing that's kind of a bit strange with this. Here you have your air filter and battery, and you can get access to the battery. There's a cover here that pops off, but you will have to remove this strut tower brace that's up here. You've also got your fuse box and your air filter. Now for accessing the brake reservoir for more fluid, there's a cover right here which can rotate off. One pretty cool thing they do for serviceability is there's these quick release tabs which you can remove, and then you can pull out the headlight housing. and then you can simply snap those back in. This is a 2 liter inline 4 cylinder with aluminum block and heads and features a supercharger as well as a turbocharger as well as direct fuel injection. The engine produces 302 horsepower at 5700 rpm and 295 pound-feet of torque at 2100 rpm, so peak torque is hit pretty early on. Now 302 horsepower is quite a bit for a 2 liter engine and Volvo is looking to step down their six-cylinder engines to four-cylinder engines because they're able to achieve these high horsepower numbers along with the added benefit of less weight from the smaller engine and they're also more efficient being smaller. The engine features other efficient components such as an electric water pump and an alternator decoupler. The electric water pump is variable allowing for optimal power consumption unlike traditional belt-driven pumps which are typically always running. The alternator decoupler allows for the alternator to be decoupled upon acceleration or when it's not needed and coupled under engine braking, essentially making it regenerative braking. Volvo chose to use both the supercharger and a turbocharger so that there was an immediate response upon pressing the throttle pedal and efficient higher RPM power once there was enough exhaust gas to make use of the advantages of a turbocharger. So let's follow the intake air. The air comes in up front and then feeds back through the air filter. After passing that, it heads through the roots type supercharger. The air passes into the supercharger up until 3500 RPM, where it can then bypass and head to the inlet of the turbocharger. After feeding through the turbocharger, the air is sent to the front of the car, where it travels through the air-to-air -air intercooler. It's then routed back and heads through the electronic throttle body, into the plastic composite intake manifold, and into the engine cylinders. The air exits through the exhaust manifold, travels through the exhaust portion of the turbocharger, and heads through a single pipe towards the rear of the vehicle. This joins up with the muffler, where the air is split between two tailpipes. Power is sent to the two front wheels via an 8-speed automatic transmission. These are optional 19-inch wheels wrapped in 235 over 40 Pirelli tires. 12.4-inch ventilated disc brakes up front matched with a McPherson strut-style suspension. Excuse my fall driving, I've got leaves covering everything in here. Here you can see the steering linkage and the anti-roll bar which is linking up with the strut. And then behind that you can see the drive axle and everything looks to be painted or coated so no rusting. 11.9 inch solid disc brakes in the rear match with a multi-link suspension. Looks to be an aluminum lower control arm. Here you can see the bump stop for the spring and then above that you've got the anti-roll bar. You also have three additional links, one up top here, this trailing arm here, and then one behind that. So let's have a look at the interior. Keyless entry and smart door handles. 
you can lock them simply by pressing on the outside. Leather seats all around, electronically adjustable with three memory settings. So sitting in the driver's seat, comfortable, very soft leather seats which are well bolstered on the side. Plenty of leg room for your knees. Uh, there's no contact with anything really. The one thing you could touch your knee basically against the side of this panel right here uh, and that is a hard plastic but the bolsters are pretty good so it kind of prevents that from happening. Overall pretty good leg room and plenty of adjustability with the driver's seat. The steering wheel, soft leather wrapped, you've got controls for your adaptive cruise control which works fantastically. If you have not yet ever tried out uh, adaptive cruise control, I'd highly recommend testing that out in a new vehicle. Uh, you've also got your audio controls here and for answering the phone, as well as paddle shifters on the left and right side which rotate with the wheel. As far as visibility out the front and to the sides is good, you've got a power moonroof as well. Now out the rear, it's not the greatest, uh, but it's not too bad. And the rear view mirror I really like, it's frameless rear view mirror, so it looks really nice and it gives you full visibility out the rear windshield. Another thing that's pretty cool that this does is it has this button here, which as you can see, pops down the two rear headrests so you can have better visibility out the rear. You also have a rear view camera as well as blind spot detections on the right and left so these will light up to let you know that there's a car in your blind spot or to your left or your right. Now as far as features you've got automatic power windows all the way around. The outside mirrors you can also turn in with touch of a button and those are powered as well. You've got your fog lights up front, automatic headlights, gas pump, and trunk release. Now for your gauge cluster, you can actually choose between different themes. So the standard one is elegance, and then you've got your RPMs on the right with your speed in the center. Eco, where it kind of gives you a little guide as far as how efficiently you're driving. And then performance, where it turns the center into a tachometer and then displays the speed digitally. The engine oil level is monitored electronically, so you can go in the menu and check to see what the oil level is. Now you've got a screen up front with navigation, uh, you can connect up your phone, you can even connect to the internet. You also have a convenient button to change the sound so you can go into the bass, treble, uh, and you also have an equalizer which is pretty unique. Dual climate control with heated front seats and the fans are easily selectable as far as where you want it to go, windows and floor, floor, body and floor, and you can turn those all on and off individually which is pretty nice. On the right side you've got this parking assist which that can be used and it monitors with the proximity sensors to make sure you don't hit anything. Above that you have the eco button. So this alters not only the gearing so that you stay in higher gears and use less fuel but it will also uh, ensure that you use the start stop technology. The engine can turn off whenever it feels like it. Uh, also the eco coast. So what this does is it basically just disables engine braking and it'll also alter your climate settings to basically use less power. Now as far as storage space, you've got some to the left in the door, you have some behind the center console in the front, um, that actually has a decent lip to it in this model, so you know you could stick a phone back there, though it is kind of an awkward little box that's back there. Uh, you also have a fairly deep glove compartment with plenty of space in there, then you've got these two cup holders as well as this 12 volt outlet, and then center armrest which actually has some good resistance to it so it'll stay wherever you put it and then you've got USB and auxiliary input there. Sitting in the rear I have the front driver's seat adjusted to where I will be driving. As you can see legroom is a bit cramped, uh, my feet are kind of tucked underneath the driver's seat but the seats are definitely comfortable, you know same soft leather, that's pretty nice. You've got this center armrest that folds down and it also has a nice storage compartment in it. One thing that is nice for the rear passengers is you do have an AC vent located on the B pillar and there is also a 12 volt outlet in the center. Okay, so let's take it for a test drive. Now unfortunately it is raining and it's been raining for about a week so the ground is pretty slick and I don't really get to take advantage of all 300 horsepower with the car being front wheel drive. Volvo claims the car does 0 to 60 in 5.6 seconds which is quite quick also considering that it's front wheel drive. Now I have been surprised that there isn't more torque steer. There is a little bit but when you floor it you really don't feel much pull on the steering wheel and considering how much power this has I was a bit surprised at that. I thought it would be a bit worse.
as far as the steering is concerned it feels pretty good the car seems to handle pretty well the brake pedal is firm and a bit sensitive there's not a whole lot of play in it but it does feel pretty good it doesn't feel unpredictable uh, and you get used to it pretty quick it's just fairly short distance that it travels Having this much power in a front wheel drive car, it is fairly easy to spin the front tires, especially when it's raining like it is right now. But it doesn't feel unsafe. I don't feel like, you know, the traction control works pretty well and it kicks in and you don't really notice the fact that, you know, it's front wheel drive only. It's a quick car, it certainly accelerates very quickly. You know, you've got power right when you step on the accelerator thanks to that supercharger. And then once you start building that exhaust up, it just switches over to the turbo and you just have continuous torque throughout the whole rev range. Overall, it doesn't seem to have too much body roll. It seems to stay fairly well planted and it feels pretty good going around the corner. So I've come to a stop and the engine has turned off and now I'm gonna release my foot from the brake and put it onto the gas pedal. And by that time, it's already in gear and accelerating. Now this also comes with paddle shifters and an 8-speed transmission, so quite a few gears to select through. Uh, and actually it works very well for an automatic gearbox, I've actually been quite impressed with it. The gear shifts are very quick, and it's definitely the best automatic transmission uh, as far as the paddle shifters are concerned, how quick they are and how smooth they are. So, driving on the highway, doing about 65, it's a little difficult to assess, you know, how quiet this car is just because it's raining so much, but it does seem that it's mostly tire noise rather than wind noise, um, and then it's just kind of being overpowered by the fact that it is raining right now. But overall, you know, it doesn't seem that loud, and there is minimal vibration, you know, through the steering wheel and through the seat, you don't really feel any vibration, so it is a smooth riding car, absolutely. So I've completed my fuel economy test run. This is a 53 mile course, primarily highway with a little bit of city and some hills mixed in. This car is rated 24 in the city and an impressive 35 on the highway. As you can see, I managed 33.2 overall, which is a bit unusual because most of the tests I've done so far have either been at the highway rating or above it. Uh, but nonetheless, 33.2 miles per gallon in a car that has 300 horsepower and weighs just under 3,500 pounds is pretty impressive. So overall impressions of the vehicle, starting with some things that I don't like. Um, one thing I would say is storage. You know, the front storage compartment's a little awkward. You can't really reach at it. And you know, there isn't really a place that you could just sit, set a phone other than the cup holders. Um, you know, not just a small little storage area up here, which I think would be nice to see. Also, the amount of buttons that are on this front uh, display up here, you know, you've got all of your controls or push buttons up here, and it's fairly complicated, you know, there's a ton to look at, so if you're trying to pay attention to the road and you want to turn something on, you've got all kinds of buttons, you know, you've got a full phone dial, which is nice because when you try and use these Bluetooth systems to try and dial a phone number, they don't always work that great, so it's nice to have these buttons, but at the same time, there's just so many of them, and looking at it, you kind of just get lost in it. Now, moving on to some of the things that I do like about the vehicle, I really do like the amount of technology that it has you know there's a lot of different features that are unique to this vehicle that it has and all of them seem to work well and you know it's it's one thing to have features it's another for them to work well the paddle shifters in this car work great they respond quickly the lane keep assist seems to work well you know if you're going around a corner and I was just kind of you know took my hands off the wheel and let it do its thing and it managed to go around the corner for me so that was pretty cool and the adaptive cruise control works fantastically uh, absolutely love that you know I've got a car in front of me doing 47 and I've got my cruise control set to 55 so you know once they speed up it'll speed up with them or I could simply get in the left lane and now that I'm over a lane it speeds up to 55 because there's no one in front of me and the power of delivery in this car is phenomenal from very early on you've got plenty of torque and you keep that torque the whole way up you know I'm not sure if twin charging is necessarily the future I think the efficiency of superchargers will kind of be a negative point there for it and things may end up going to electric turbochargers uh, down the road but this car does get incredible fuel economy you know 33 miles per gallon it's got 300 horsepower so you can't really complain and say that it's that inefficient it's certainly not it certainly does a good job of maintaining both efficiency and power depending on which one you like so I am impressed with that overall a very comfortable vehicle plenty of power and plenty of great features so overall I've enjoyed driving it and it seems to be a good car if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below thanks for watching